Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to replace the condensing unit on a system that has 410A refrigerant that the evaporator coil is still good and we're going to be replacing just the condenser. Um, I'm gonna show you right now just what happened with this condenser when we showed up to this job. We thought it was gonna be a service call, but it translated to a replacement. So let's get right into it. So we threw up gauges on this thing and it was flat, completely flat, zero. Um, I didn't have my nitrogen on this truck, so I put a little bit of 410 in the system. And because of this unit over here in the next building, I couldn't hear it, but I'm hearing actually a noise from here somewhere. I've sprayed down the EVAP coil connections, the connections here, and I believe we have a leak at the actual condenser somewhere. So we're gonna take these screws out and see if we can locate that. Well guys, we found our problem. Huge leak right there. So she had mentioned that they had a bunch of weeds here that she had a company come and clear out. And my suspicion is they bumped this with a weed whacker or something and it hit it just right and caused a big old leak. So being as this compressor has been running in a vacuum for who knows how long, we're gonna recommend replacing this condensing unit. It's out of warranty, unfortunately, but everything inside looks really good and it's 410A. So it should be a simple replacement. All right, guys, so we've got our new condenser. This is a rude uh, one and a half ton that we're gonna be replacing this with. So we're gonna start. Uh, we have zero pressure, so we're not even worried about um, evacuating the system or recovering the refrigerant. So we're just gonna cut our lines, disconnect our electrical, and slide this system out. All right, so we've got our new condenser sitting here. Um, I've just got it tweaked so I can do the electrical. So we just rerouted our conduit to this new unit, just three wires red on one lug, black on the other, does not matter of the two, and then ground on that lug there. And very basic on the thermostat wire, there's just two wires coming from the furnace to the AC unit, and these do not matter which wire is connected to each as far as the polarity. So everything is done on this, we're gonna put our panel back on, and then we'll work on making our connections here. All right, so as you can see, whoever did this made it really long. I don't know why on that unit, it's nice and tight. Um, so I'm gonna fix that. We're gonna cut this here. We're gonna put an elbow in so it's closer to this wall and it's just gonna look a lot nicer. And then we're going to replace the filter dryer, of course. So I'll show you once we have this fabbed up so you can compare what it looked like before and after. All right, so we got our lines all fitted here. Um, we have some fittings up here. We're gonna do Stay Bright 8 with this. We have our filter dryer pointed towards the furnace. And uh, because these come out so close, we had to do a little bit of a bend here so these aren't gonna be rubbing on each other and I can still put my insulation back on. Um, but overall, everything looks good. So we're gonna get everything cleaned, uh, fluxed, and then we're going to show you some of the Stay Bright 8 soft soldering here in just a second. All right, so everything's been scotch brighted, fluxed, and we are ready to use our Stay Bright 8. We're just using uh, good old map gas here. And this is the flux. It's called Stay Clean by Harris, and it's specifically engineered for HVC. Uh, and this is Stay Bright 8. If you're curious where to find this, simply go down to the video description, click My Favorite HVAC Tools, and you can find this combo there. Forgot my tripod today, so I'm gonna just kind of set you up right here, and hopefully you can see just how easy this process is.
folks, we are done. Beautiful joints there. We're gonna wipe all of these down. As you can see, we get a little bit of black um, stuff on the outside. So once we wipe this off, we'll show you what it looks like. And then we're gonna get our suction line wrapped, do our pressure test, and then we're ready, we're ready to pull our vacuum. All right, so we've got 300 PSI on the system. We're just using our new Calgon micro gas leak detector. We're just gonna spray all of these joints down really good. Just to confirm that we have zero chance of leakage. What I like to do is just go back through like this. Just make sure you don't see any bubbles. Tell you what, I love Stay Bright 8. There's a lot of haters, people that think it's no bueno, but to each his own, you know? I've had really good success with it. And if this is easier than brazing, I don't have to flow nitrogen, then I'm gonna use Stay Bright 8 every chance I get. So I don't see any bubbles. This is the only spot that we were um, looking at. Obviously the old condenser had a hole in it, so Nothing in the evaporator side is um, leaking. Everything looks really good in there. But we're just gonna let our pressure sit for about 10 minutes. And once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and pull our vacuum. Okay, so our pressure test was successful. And what I have been trying to make it a practice of doing is putting my uh, Schrader core removal tool on like I always do. But instead of just letting the pressure out via my manifold, um, what, I, uh, what I've been trying to do is, and I wanted to show you this so you can see what I'm doing here. So we just threaded this on, the, the valve stem is still in here. We have 300 PSI in the system of nitrogen. So we're gonna feed this in. We're going to lock that in. And now we're going to press until we, hear, we heard that click into the Schrader core. We're going to remove this, and as soon as we do, it's gonna press this shaft out because there's pressure in the system. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this off, and we're gonna take our Schrader core out. There we have it. I'm gonna put it up here for safekeeping. And we're gonna let all of this pressure out at once. So anything that's in there, any contaminants, the nitrogen will push out. And that's a nice extra layer of precaution. So it's gonna be loud, but let's go ahead and open this full blast all at once. So now that we have that done, we're gonna remove our nitrogen. We're gonna put our ball valve with our micron gauge on the high side. And this has a Schrader core uh, depressor on it. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure these are snug. Power on our micron gauge. And we're gonna hook up our true blue kit to our vacuum pump and then we'll get started. Okay, so we've got our true blue uh, hose hooked up. We're um, turned off here. We're gonna pull a vacuum on our hose first. We've got a full battery charge here. So you'll notice the soft start. This Navac 4 CFM uh, vacuum pump is amazing. I absolutely love this machine. It was so much worth uh, the money. They're a little bit spendy, around 700 bucks, but totally worth it in my opinion. So we can pull down about six systems on a single charge with this combo with our Schrader core removed. So we've got our vacuum pulled on our hose. We're gonna open this up. Let's hear the pitch change there. All right, so our system has passed the decay test. We're um, sitting well below 500. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we took off these caps and we're going to open these. I've heard that you're supposed to do the liquid first, suction first. I don't think it matters, honestly. Let's open these fully. 
And the biggest thing I think is just letting it sit, let the pressures and the refrigerant kind of stabilize for about 10 minutes. All right, so the last thing that we want to do, both of these are opened and our caps are back on, is we're going to put our Schrader core back in. So we're simply going to slide this in, lock it in place, open it up, slide this down, and we should be able to feel some resistance once this is fully seated. And right there is fully seated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock this Instead of taking this whole thing off, we're going to remove this end cap first. And we're gonna slowly open this just to verify that our Schrader core is in place and it's working. Beautiful. Now, once we take this off, no gas or anything will escape. And we are done. So we're gonna throw our gauges on this. We'll show it to you running and we'll show you the temperature drop. We're gonna check our pressures. And uh, this is about a 15, 20 foot line set. So we should be pretty close on our charge. All right, guys and gals, our thermostat is on. So we're gonna plug this in and see what we got. our gauges on make sure our pressures are good and we'll have another install in the books all right so here's the pressures on our system uh, running as you can see we're at 137 and 365 it's a little high on the high side I think because this is a 5 8 line we went up to a three quarter but I think we should be fine we're hovering between five and seven degrees of subcooling um, I'm hesitant to add any more refrigerant. I would like this number to be a little bit lower, but I think we're going to be totally fine being as this is a small system. Uh, this place is insulated on both sides and I think we'll be totally good. We've dropped several degrees since we started um, the system up. Now one last thing that we're going to do is we disconnect our high side while the system is running. That's the beauty of these low loss fittings. It just lets out a little tiny spurt. And what we're gonna do now, since we still have our tank hooked up, is we're gonna close this off and then we're going to open both sides. We did burp these lines before we um, did anything here. But as you can see, our pressures have equalized to the low side pressure. And now we are okay to disconnect this one. It will have a lot less pressure on it and the blue side as well. And what that does is it transfers all of that high pressure that was locked in this hose out into the system so that all of that remains in the system and not in my hoses. And that's it, folks. Well, guys, we are wrapped up. As you can see, this looks so much nicer than that other one that was coming out to like here. Uh, the footprint of these roots is a little bit wider, so we had to shift this over, but everything looks really good. We're spitting out a lot of heat up here, and our temperature drop is 20 degrees. Now, if you want to see another full AC installation using the Stay Bright 8 method, check out this video right here, and I'm sure you'll enjoy that video as well. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.